So you recently went out for an acting audition for a part that you've just fallen in love with. And you've been waiting for hours to find out whether or not you got the part. And then you get a text message saying that they want you for a callback. Great! <laughs> but what's a callback? Well, I'll tell you what a callback is, and I will share with you one of my own recent personal experiences. Coming up next on The Starting Actor. Hey, what's up guys? I'm Vinny Horst and this is The Starting Actor. And on this channel, I give practical advice to new actors for film and television by diving into the real world aspects of being an actor so that when you decide to get outside the classroom, you know what to expect. So if you're new here, consider subscribing. All right, so let's get the elephant right out of the room. What is a callback? Well, it's another step in the audition process. Sometimes you'll go to a single audition and you'll get the job right away, but other times you will have more than one audition and that second audition is called a callback. The director clearly saw something that they liked in you and they want to bring you back to talk to you more and to audition you again. Sometimes there's one callback and in bigger projects there's two, three or even four callbacks. All right, so let's get into one of my recent personal experiences for callbacks. If you tuned into a recent episode, you may remember that I did an audition for a film that didn't provide any sides. Well, that's what this callback was for. Apparently I did pretty well, so that's great. So I showed, showed up at the audition, and as it turns out, I was the first one there. And then there was another actor that showed up, and eventually the casting director showed up, but they were a little bit late. So one of the interesting things that came of it is actually, if you've been to an audition before, you'll know that they have a sign-up sheet where every actor will write their name in as they arrive at the audition so that the casting director can audition us in the order that we arrived. Well, the casting director wasn't actually here, so an actor pulled out a piece of paper and started writing people's names down. So that was kind of nice, kind of interesting. I'd never seen that before. So here's how it all unfolded. I was there for a role for a priest, and there was also another role for a sinner. And so there was two people that were going to audition at any one time. In total, there was 14 of us that arrived. So what the casting director did is that they brought two of us, one sinner and one priest, into the room at any one time. He set up his camera and gave us our scripts to read through. It was pages five through eight. I remember it very well because I read it many, many, many times. So uh, the priest and the sinner would read together for one go round. And then one of the, the sinner would leave and be replaced by a second sinner. We would read together and then the priest would leave, be replaced by another priest. And we would continue and continue and continue. So there was 14 people in total, lots of reads. So as it turns out, uh, the whole process took about three hours, which is, which is quite a long time. Uh, but nonetheless, it was, it was a great time. I, I, I learned a lot at it. It was really interesting to try to have to stay in the moment, stay in the character for that long. Uh, it was a new experience for me. Fortunately for me, not every priest and every sinner was asked to read with every other priest and sinner. In my case, I actually got into the room four times, and I think I read with seven or eight other sinners. Uh, but there were some priests and some sinners that they went to the room once and the casting director said, thank you for your time, appreciate it, uh, you may leave now. So as you can imagine, going into the room four different times and reading with seven different or eight different partners, it gets to be monotonous, right? It's the same thing over and over and over again. So one of the strategies that I used is that I tried to vary my performance from take to take. Sometimes only slight variations, but other times very dramatic variations. In particular, right at the end, I think it was the last audition that I did, I did something completely different that the casting director had never asked for, just to try something different and to show him that I had a bit of variation uh, available to me. It depends on the casting director, but sometimes they will give you notes and they will redirect you and ask you to do different things for different takes. In this particular case, the casting director didn't do that, so it was upon me to decide whether or not I wanted to do that. And I did, because I didn't want to have to do the same thing over and over and over again. And naturally, you can imagine that the casting director is going to be watching these videos afterwards, and I didn't want to have to have him watch me do the same thing over and over again. So hopefully I did a great job. We'll see. You never know, right? With these auditions, I said it before and I'll say it again. You may think that you did the best job in the world and you don't get the job, and maybe you think you, you screwed it up badly, but you do get the job, so it all depends. But this is a relatively new experience for me, so you tell me, how was my experience similar to yours? Was it the same? Was it different? Let me know in the comments below. I'd love to hear from you. And also, if you have any questions or comments or ideas for future episodes, again, please let me know in the comments below. Well, that's it for another episode of The Starting Actor. I am Vinnie Horst. Thank you very much for stopping by, and I hope that you found this useful. If you enjoyed yourself, consider subscribing, and I'll see you next time.